for me, Coach, just how nice is it going to be to be at home for an eight-game homestand here coming up? I don't know. <laughs> uh, what have we played? There was four, five, six games. I guess six. So I don't – I'm ready to get used to the timeline, and I think eventually we're moving Friday to 5 o'clock start. Um to try to take a normal BP first and then have a pregame meal. And I, we haven't really done what I envision being able to do for our home game. So I'm ready for it. Uh, I just, you know, it's, it's a little bit new still. So hopefully we kind of settle into the timeline and um, it's efficient and, and we feel good with it. But, you know, anytime you're at home, Mark, you, 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 you're more familiar with your surroundings and how the field plays and, you know, what's going on around you. So you're at home and that's obviously to your advantage. Earlier, you want to talk about this, but I, I know bids to host a regional uh, are due on the April 12th. Um, I know that's something your players talked before the season that they're pretty interested in. Again, I know this is early and then um, it also sounds like they'll be predetermined while teams still have, you know, five, six, maybe eight games left or more. Um, what do you kind of think about this, this earlier process? And is that um, something you plan to submit? Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to submit. Now, um, the timeline of it, I, I think everybody that's in the conversation is going to submit a bid to host. Now, um, they don't determine those sites for a month or so. So you, you've got a lot of highway left ahead of you before you're determined to host. Um, but it's probably been a while since this has been um, an option here. Um, and I'm excited. It's, it's, again, it's a measuring stick for our guys to realize what they've been able to accomplish with a very tough schedule. So, um, you know, I'm proud of them for that. Um, you know, navigating the facility and, and how things work um, in your home facility to host under these conditions, like those are things that we'll continue to discuss this afternoon and throughout the week to make sure what we're presenting um, is logical for everybody involved, but man, it's to be in the discussion is pretty special. And, you know, I'm very proud of, of what we've been able to do. Um, I believe you guys had hit like 200 over the previous seven games. You had a dozen hits yesterday or something in that vicinity. Um, what, what did you see? Did you just get a good matchup or do you, do you think your hitters made some adjustments to, to pick up the hitting pace a little bit? Um, you know, Tim, our, our place plays different at home. Like, it it doesn't seem as offensive. Like, the games at our stadium, for what I've seen in the five games I've coached, it just right. plays differently. Like, there's there's places at every level of the game where it, it plays a little bit different. Um, and I see just different looks when you're at a road stadium versus when we're at home. Um, that being said, our, our approach yesterday was – was pretty good. Like there were some balls that were, that were stepped on and the same with um, Saturday's game, you know, Cavadas and putts, those balls were, were hit. And if you look at putts as at bats, there are three balls that I think of Duke and Louisville where he demolished the ball to right center field at our stadium. And it just, it's bigger. And that wind kind of knocked it down. Yeah. He's taking the exact same swing three or four times with nothing to show for it. Like he did on Saturday when the ball went out to right center field. Like, I mean, it was smoke. So um, again, it's just, it's just becoming a little more accustomed to how the game is played under the conditions at our field. And like at Virginia, the ball carried and Clemson is a quick surface. So I'm still learning what may work at home and, and on the road. Um, but the quality of the at bat yesterday was, was pretty good. Um, and, and when you get production on both halves of the lineup, you have a chance to score. If it's just okay. one half, like you're not going to extend enough innings to really put a three run inning together or a five run inning or, and that's what you saw happen yesterday. Could you speak to what, I mean, the consistency of Bertrand going deep in the game, the middle game of your series, you've had him or, or Louisville, the second game. Uh, just his ability to, you know, you can you can use the bullpen a little bit more in game one, and then you have a, you know, one that's rest up a little bit more for game three. If you could just speak to his consistency and your decision making because of that. Well, he's a he's a pitcher, and um, 
he pitched against our team at Greensboro in 2019, complete game. And like, I trust what my guys tell me. And as the game is going on, he's pitching against me. Like our guys were pretty experienced and they're like, coach, it's tough. Like you're not getting anything to hit. Like it's any pitch, any count, both sides of the plate, breaking ball, change up, fastball in, out, little cutter. And that's what you've seen here. Um, and that's why he's here. And um, we have to use him the way we're using him because you see what we're doing on Friday and you see what we're doing on Sunday. Pitt, completely the opposite. They hand Myers the ball on Friday. They hand Gilbertson the ball on Saturday and they're not touching it for 120 pitches. And those guys have given them deep starts. That's not our roadmap right now. Right. Um, so the way you have to do it is stick the, the longer outing in the middle to try to survive Friday, Sunday. That's what we're doing. Hey, Coach, uh, I'm not sure if you saw it yesterday, but uh, Baseball America rated Notre Dame as one of the eight teams to make Omaha. I know you guys are talking about regionals, and that was your goal. But I'm just curious, do you ever bring up Omaha to the team? You know, we do. And Scott Wingo is such an integral part of our staff. And he won the thing twice. And so we, we do talk about it. Now, so does everybody else. Like, everybody has this discussion year round. And I try not to, to harp on it because that's the last thing, like, that's going to happen. You know, so if you don't take care of business, in the game Friday, like your chances of Omaha go down. So if that's your focus, like I think you're looking way too far down the road to really be good. But when we do things that we feel like are championship caliber traits, like we talk about it. And I, I'm not cramming Omaha down anybody's throat. Again, I, my goal is just to try to play a good game on Friday. That's that's the next game. And that's how I want our guys to approach it. And then as you continue to evolve and, and the season conveyor belt rolls forward, you, you just take care of the next day and, and you'll be in really good shape. So it's not a how many miles to Omaha and everything based on Omaha, man. It's based on we need to go play good baseball in the first inning on Friday and, and take it from there. But – like reflecting on some of the things and like I, Wingo talks to the team a little bit when I ask him to say, Scott, like explain what your championship teams were able to do. And, and it, it grabs the attention of the guys. And I think we're, we're doing some of those things. Now we have to be better offensively and we have to be a little bit more consistent in some areas on the mound, but we do see some things that are, performing very well but again Omaha is not like the theme of every practice and every week in the locker room it's not 